Morning, Gaffer. Morning, Ginger. Hey, Gaffer. Why don't you get a proper aerial? I mean, why do you use a coat hanger? Gives me somewhere to hang my jacket while I thump people who ask silly questions. <laughs> Oh, Charlie. My word, you're looking well. I've never seen you look better. You shouldn't say things like that, Charlie. Not when you know I can't get a refund on my life insurance. Yeah, uh, you're <laughs> a right character, you are, you gaffer. <laughs> this is the male. Yes, and this is the female. <laughs> What's the matter with you? How about a friendly little greeting? Like, good morning, Betty. What a wonderful day, Betty. Have you seen the weather, Betty? We've not had a winter like this since last summer. <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right, what's the matter this time? You sound like a centipede with sciatica. This lot, for a start. Have you seen the one on top? Oh, HMS. I'll give you six to four. That is from the Inland Reverend. You're offering me another free vasectomy of the wallet. <laughs> Maybe they've sent you a little greetings card. After all, it is the third anniversary of you not paying your income tax. Betty, if the good Lord had meant us to pay income tax, he'd have covered our sculpts in gold dust instead of dandruff. <laughs> have you seen this? Every one of these is a damn bill. How is it that other people's bills get here before mine get there? I think some of them put bribes on their envelopes. I've had my suspicions for some time about those little bits of coloured paper people stick on the top right-hand corner. <laughs> I'll stand on you in a minute. I know you're the cross I have to bear, Betty, but just this morning, I'm the bear I wouldn't advise you to cross. So watch it. Hello, Betty. Hello, Harry. Hello, Gaffer. And the top of the morning to you. It is not the top of the morning. It's halfway down the other side. You're late. Don't worry about it. I'll leave early to make up for it. <laughs> well, my esteemed leader, and what are your orders for this morning, sir? Orders of what we haven't got. We're about as busy as... King Solomon's 957 concubine. <laughs> so, Harry, if you ever get round to putting on your overalls in anger, then I suggest you do what you've been doing for the last week. Nothing, only try and do it quicker. No sooner said than not done. <laughs> oh, by the way, I do have a small complaint. Yes, I have noticed. What is it, tea break lag? <laughs> tea break lag. <laughs> He's always ready there, gag, isn't he? Uh, the gag can't be working because I can still hear you. All right, what's your grab? Well, has to do with the lack of a canteen here. Do you realise we have to sit at our lathes and eat our sandwiches? That is really not very hygienic. And anyway, I'm getting fed up with the flavour of patty de four greases. All right, what do you want me to do? Well, how about letting us have the use of that old shed in the yard? We could clean it up, you know, and I could bring in a camping stove from home. Charlie shakes a mean frying pan. We could, we could cook up all that... Egg on Rony stuff. Well, make it two eggs on Rony and I might join you. <laughs> Do you mean you agree? Oh, thank you, Gaffer. Do you know, for a mean, miserable, money-grabbing old swine, you really are not such a bad old stick. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> I never realised the roots went down that far. <laughs> what did he say? I'm not such a bad old stick. And Charlie said something about me being a right character. I've got a terrible feeling those two are beginning to like me. What am I doing wrong? Well, don't you realise? Today is the first day of spring. Flowers are coming up, gas bills are going down, hot glances are going sideways. Are they? I suppose any day now then, Ginger's going to start taking up chess because he's heard about somebody mating in six moves. <laughs> Miss, uh, whatever your name is. Uh, Betty, you must remind me to get a new Death Watch Beetle for the door. I haven't heard any knocking from it lately. <laughs> I wish to see your employer, young Mr. Moffat. Young Mr. Moffat? <laughs> I think you're going to need a time walk. Hey, all right, friend. Uh, would you mind uh, telling me your business? I do not discuss my business with subordinates. Just tell Mr. Moffat that Clara's father is here and wishes to see him at once. I take it there is only one Mr. Moffat around here? Young ginger-haired chap. Oh, he's ginger-haired and you've called to see about your daughter, that Mr. Moffat. Yes, yes. Well, I haven't had a laugh for quite a while, so I'll go and see if I can find him. Of course, it, uh, it won't be all that easy, you realise. He's, he's a bit like a blister. He doesn't appear until all the work's done. <laughs>
Excuse me, Senior Pisa. Do you have to lean over everything, Ginger? Oh, hello, Gaffer. And hello to you too, Gaffer. Come again? I just thought I'd pop in and congratulate you on your sudden rise in the world. Of course, you could go a lot higher once I measure the seat of your overalls with my boot. <laughs> have you busted a strain gauge or something? I don't know what you use for bait, but I'd love to be able to bottle it. Does the uh, name Clara ring a bell? Oh, yeah, a starting bell. Gets me running like the clappers in the other direction. Well, why is that, then? She's this bird who looks like a piece of hardboard. In fact, she's so thin, if she doesn't breathe in and out really fast, her chest sticks to her shoulder blades. Well, you'll have to stop mating like this because her father happens to be in my office. What, old man Potter? If that's his name, yeah. yeah what does he want to see you about? Hey, hey, there's been nothing between me and Clara, you know. And on more than one occasion, I've no doubt. <laughs> no, actually, he doesn't want to see me, Ginger. He wants to see the young carotid boss of Moffat Engineering. I was thinking of buying myself a ginger wig and taking off about 40 years. Oh, that. <laughs> yes, that. Yeah, it's just a way of impressing the dolly birds. Using your name, it's just a ploy. I see. So that's what I finished up as, is it? A gigolo's ploy thing. <laughs> she got right up my nose, going on about her father's works. So I said, I've got a business myself, Moffat Engineering. Might be smaller, but it's just as good as Metal and General. Metal and General Engineering? That's one of the biggest firms around here. Yeah, well, her old man's a managing director. I thought you said she was ugly. She is. I've seen less spots on a set of dominoes. <laughs> I do not understand you young people. How, how can you look her father's bank account in the credit column and say she hasn't got a lot going for her? I mean, all right, it might not all be going in the same direction, but don't you realise you, you could be laughing all the way to the bunk? <laughs> now she's going on about how her old man could get Moffitt's a lot of work if I'm nice to her. <laughs> really? W what are you looking at me like that for, Gaffer? Oh, nothing really, Ginger. It's just that you just reminded me of a life belt I once knew. <laughs> right, smarten yourself up and start walking about as if you own the place, because as of now, you do. Get yourself a clean smock, put it on, wash your hands, and wear that. Hey, hey, Gaffer, what are you up to? Didn't you ever hear the little fairy story about the princess who kissed the ugly frog and it turned into a handsome Prince Charming? Well, this time the Prince Charming is going to kiss the ugly frog and it's going to turn into a very handsome business proposition. <laughs> Sugar. Oh, oh Mr. Potter, I, I see that Betty's there. Uh, uh, a young, uh, young Mr. Moffat won't be a few minutes. He's uh, just had to mute the computer. <laughs> bit of an expert in his own field, I believe. Oh, he's a bit of an expert in anybody's field. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably, of course, why your daughter finds him so attractive. No, no, that's what I want to talk about. Now, let me be frank. Uh, Claire has always led a very sheltered life. I've always tried to save her from this dreadful, permissive society we live in. Mind you, I blame all this sex on television. It's very bad for the youngsters, you know. Yes, it doesn't do the top of the camera to be good either, does it? <laughs> well, listen, I'm in a position to offer this young fella a considerable amount of work, providing that I know he's the right sort of chap to move around with Clara. Oh, don't you worry, Mr. Potter. The, the young Mr. Moffat we know and love is absolutely of no danger to your daughter, I can assure you. As a matter of fact, his father was voted soccer team of the year. Would you uh, like to come through to the factory? Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, right through there. I'd come through, uh, Mr. Potter. Uh, Ginger, uh, 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 Mr. Moffat, sir, I'm just throwing uh, Mr. Potter around the works. Oh, thank you, Fred. You can carry on with the sweeping up now. <laughs> you know, zoom with the broom. This place looks more like Zaza Gabor's handbag. <laughs> Taking chances, look. <laughs> And what can I do for you, Mr. Potter? Well, now, could you give me a price on these stainless steel spindles? Seventy of them. Now, if it's reasonable, I think I can offer you the job straight away. I see, uh... Well, let's say, uh, five and a piece. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, of course, will just be the VAT, won't it, Mr. Moffat? Hey, Gaffer, come here. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Moffat, can I uh, just go and have a word with Campbell White? <coughs> Is there something going on I should know about? I can't tell you now. It would confuse you, and that would make two of us. I'll tell you later. All right, just... Well, that's a deal, then, Mr. Moffat. Twenty pounds each is a very reasonable price. I'll let you have the order first thing in the morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Potter. <laughs> there, guys. Twenty quid a piece for them in stainless. We'll lose money, you great pillock. Yeah, but what you don't, what you don't realise, Gaffer, is I've insisted to get a penalty clause. You insisted, you nana. A penalty clause works against us. 
Aren't you going to give us a bonus? No, I'm going to give you the brush around the flaming edge. <laughs> Haven't you got anything better to do? Of course not. I'm the gaffer, aren't I? I think I'll have double yellow lines painted around the top of my desk. In words that you usually specialise in, get them off. Yeah, I'm, I'm fed up. It's no fun doing nothing officially. How do you stand the boredom of being a gaffer? Oh, I amuse myself by doing crossword puzzles. Puzzling out how to make a living out of this place makes me think up plenty of cross words. <laughs> Look, if you want to be a gaffer, go and do it in the factory. Go on, go and chase them up on those spindles of potters. Oh, all right. Hey, and I hope you're not getting bored enough to start anything with that Clara. The devil finds work for idle glands, you know. I haven't touched them. No, well, just you make sure you don't, because all your jobs in there depend on her being virtuoso infrastructure. Go on, on your back. <laughs> You sound in rather a sour mood, considering things are going reasonably well for once. I'm glad you think so, Betty. I learned a long time ago that if things can go wrong, they will. If they can't, they still will. And if they're foolproof, they were probably wrong in the first place. Gaffer! And there's your proof. Gaffer, if that young ginger says just once more, is that all you've done? He's gonna be. Uh, if you're talking about those spindles of potters, how many have you done? I mean, roughly. Roughly, 16. Properly, none. We've had to scrap every one so far. We've just about ruined every tool in the place. What was that material you got, Gaffer? Well, uh, that's the chap for EN 58 AM, as the drawing specified. Mind you, what with him talking behind the back of his hand in a thick, rummy accent and the pub jukebox belting out 50,000 decibels, it wasn't easy. In other words, it fell off the back of a lorry. <laughs> no, it was probably the back of the lorry that fell off under the strain. Well, I, I, I think it falling off must have work-hardened it because I reckon that you are finished up with EN58A. You are joking. Well, what's the difference? Betty, if there's an M on the end of it, it means you can machine it. If there isn't, then you couldn't have polished that stuff with a hand grenade. Harry, I have to save money somehow with Ginger quoting the price he did. Oh, well, what are we going to do now? You buy the right stuff and quickly, and we try to make up lost time. Don't worry. With a bit of luck, you'll have nothing to worry about. Yes, and the nothing I've got to worry about is in the bank. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. I'm suffering from cirrhosis of the ledger again. I, I did make out another cheque this month, not with the warning I've had from the manager. Well, why don't you try your old trick of piercing the row of tiny wee holes through the cheque number so that the bank's computer disappears up its own floppy <laughs> disk <laughs> long enough for you to get paid for the job? You tried that three weeks ago and the cheque fell in half. <laughs> it wasn't all that funny. I had to pay bank charges on both bits. <laughs> right. All we can do is salvage what we can and get old Potter to pay for the work we've done so far. He's never going to pay you for that rubbish. He'll have to if he cancels the order, won't he? And why should he do that? Because, Betty, I am going to confirm his worst beliefs about Ginger and his precious daughter, Clara. What's he going to do? I don't know. I am going to turn our Ginger Tom loose on his ugly puss. <laughs> Ginger, that uh, bench isn't made of helium. You don't have to hold it down. I want to have a word with you about Clara. I told you, I haven't so much as touched the hair on her chin. I'm sure you haven't, but actually, I've, uh, <laughs> I've changed my mind. I want you to do your worst. In fact, I want you to do your best worst. Oh, no, thanks. Ginger, it's spring, the time of the year when the shortest distance between two points are a couple of court in Edgum. <laughs> I mean, if they can manage it, surely you can force yourself. I just don't fancy her. Well, shut your eyes and think of England. <laughs> Or at least shut one of them and think of Moffat Engineering. If I do, it'll cost you a bomb. If you don't, I should put one under you. <laughs> I'd have to do the thing in style. Dinner for two, hire of a car, bunch of flowers. I don't know what's the matter with women these days. In my day, they were happy with a bag of chips and a lift on your crossbar across the nearest turnip field. <laughs> but Claire is class, isn't she? I mean, she's used to eating at places like Luigi's. I can't afford Luigi's. Tell her nobody goes there now, because it's always too crowded. Excuse me, Gaffer. What? Oh, 
Charlie, why, uh, why have you got your brains in a paper bag? <laughs> I'm just cooking a meal for the lads in our new canteen. Uh, will gaffer burger and chips be all right, Ginger? Uh, hey, hang on. Hey, what's this gaffer burger? Oh, it's what Harry calls my hamburgers. He said they remind him of you because they're as tough as old boots and take a lot of swallowing. <laughs> <laughs> Good, eh? You just go and warn him not to use too much sauce. Hey, hang on, hang on a minute. Hey, that's not a bad idea. That's how we can afford to do it. Afford to do what? Wine and dine Clara. In our own place with Charlie as the chef. Gaffer, you, you surely don't expect her to eat in that old hut in the yard. I mean, we take it in turns dusting the spider. <laughs> Leave it to Uncle Frederick. I'll organise everything. In fact, I am going to write the greatest work of fiction in history because you, Ginger, are going to appear as a gentleman. <laughs> Bonsoir, Charlie. <laughs> Morning, Henry. How's the world's only one-man twin? Well, it's nice to see another human face, Fred. You know, I was beginning to think they'd started World War Three without me. Why, well, is, uh, is something wrong? I mean, apart from what's always wrong. Well, it's lack of trade in general and hope in particular. You know, I can remember when this shop was full of customers. Little old ladies with big shopping bags. They're all gone now, mostly to court on shoplifting charges. <laughs> I bet they didn't lick any of your stock, it's too old. I wouldn't be surprised if these jelly babies didn't reach puberty before I did. I can't afford any more. And anyway, my stock room's empty as it is. That, Henry, is what I wanted to see you about. You told me about that. I thought of a use for it. Do you want to borrow it for storage space? What the hell would I want to store, apart from old electric bills? And I burn those on the stove to save gas. No. I was thinking, Henry, actually it turned into a very nice little cafe. Cafe? Yeah, well, let's face it, I mean... You know, it might do this business a bit of good. I mean, let's face it, the trouble is people don't hang around long enough in here, do they? I mean, they dash in, ask if you've got frozen frog's legs, you pull up your trousers and show you haven't, and they're gone. <laughs> and that's before you've even got time to mention your nice little toad in the old... No, <laughs> Look, where does a cafe come into here? Instead of them standing there buying nothing, they'd just be sitting in there eating nothing. Not if you did it right. I might even think of coming in with you. I thought for a long time of investing my overdraft in some little venture. Can I, uh, can I come through and have a shift at the room? Oh, all right, come on. Oh. That's not bad, that. Hey, I, uh, I'd have to do a little bit of, like, uh, market research first, like. How do you mean? Well, I mean, if you let me have the key to the side door tonight, I'll, uh, I'll do it tonight. Give it, see how it goes. And who, Fred, is going to do the cleaning up? With a bit of luck, Henry. Oh, yeah. Right then, let's have another one through, because we don't have a lot of room for anything. I don't have a lot of room for anything in here. Look, why don't you stop complaining, you punker? Now, you know what you've got to do, don't you? You come in, right? You start the punch-up with Ginger. Naturally, that would terrify Potter's daughter. Ginger, he starts to do his knight in shining lurex bit. Saves her from a fate worse than bad breath. And naturally, she melts in his arms like butter poured over hot pikelets and gives him her all. <laughs> Gaffer, how did you ever talk me into this? Don't you remember? I cast a spell over you by mentioning the magic words, time and art. <laughs> on your mocha. Go on. Go and get ready. Betty, now, you know what you're going to do. Get straight back to the office and drop an anonymous word in Potter's ear phone that his daughter's playing juvenile lead in an orgy. Or well, is it orgy? Don't matter. Tell him she's having one of each. Go on. <laughs> Charlie, you know what you've got to do. Just warm up that Chinese takeaway stuff and get ready to serve it. If you want me, I'll be in my car in the street. All right? Oh, right, Gaffer. Here we are, then. Nice place, isn't it? Yeah, table for two, please. Oh, certainly. <laughs> All right, then. Dearest. I don't think I like this place. Well, I can recommend the dish you did with the chef's own special sauce. What's in the sauce? Oh, well marinated monosodium glutamate served with a sodium monosinate dressing and garnished with granulate and antioxidant. Ask a silly question. Double dollops all around, Charlie. Right. Eh, Glen Fiddich, Glen Farkless, Sock and Tushin and all that stuff, eh? Mad McCampbell. That's right, Jimmy. Mad Mac McCampbell. Look. We don't want any trouble. Well, trouble is what you've got, sunshine. 
Because I promised you, next time we met, I was going to fix you good and proper. I think we ought to go. How am I not good enough for you? <laughs> you, Jimmy, you got a light, Mac. I don't smoke. It's no for a fag. It's for setting fire to the place. <laughs> Look, you're upsetting the good lady. Oh, please don't. He might hurt you. I'm not afraid of such scum. Oh, but he's evil. <laughs> Best leave him to me. Pardon? No, it's all right. Daddy always insisted I learn how to protect myself. So I studied karate while I was at boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beth, have you, have you rang old man Potter yet? Yes, of course. Uh, give me his number, will you? I think something's gone astray or even further. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ah, good evening. I wonder how the GPO do that. <laughs> my daughter and I saw your likeness still on. Uh, is she with uh, young Mr. Moffat by any chance? Well, the last time I saw him, she was just in front of him, or he was just behind her. I can't remember which. Oh, thank goodness for that. Only I had a very odd phone call. Anyway, while I'm here, I must apologize for not sending the material for that job. Only we had difficulties on the border, you understand. Oh, you mean you were going to supply the material? Well, naturally, at the price that Mr. Moffat quoted. Oh, well. <laughs> You, young lady, you're coming straight home with me. I'm not having to mix in with these folks, you know. Oh, Daddy, you're such a spoil sport. What was this on some of the Charlie Bigwood business? It's just not been my week. It's not my fault Charlie Bigwood chucks you off the board. I bet he doesn't treat his daughter like this. Oh, stop it, will you? Come along and don't be impertinent. Get out of this place. Isn't it marvellous? All that trouble for now, he's been made repugnant. <laughs> Is she gone? Yeah, and good riddance. Gaffer, don't you ever ask me to do anything like this again. I second that. Oh, God. Hey, Charlie Bigwood. I know him. And his great lump of a daughter. A cowboy, a gin, and half underweight to scratching since she's anybody who can lift her. <laughs> hey, Joe, <laughs> to the left or to the right, because they're all the same in office when we make it overnight. Resents the time he spends on paperwork and VAT. Keeps the money that the taxman doesn't sleep. <laughs> 